I'm Dan Wallace with the UIC Athletic Department, joined by the head skipper of the baseball program, Mike D., as the Flames get ready to open up Horizon League play at home this weekend with a four-game series against Milwaukee. Coach, we'll talk about uh, some of your early season games so far, but a year ago today was the last time the Flames had a game on Curtis Branderson Stadium, taking on Augustana. What has this past year been like for you and the program, dealing with the cancellation of the rest of your spring season, you know, all the um, things you had to navigate during the fall and then finally being able to get back out and competing. Just overall, what's this past year been like for you and your team? Well, I think it's been a challenge for everyone in the country. Um, I, I think the initial challenge was just wrapping our arms around the reality of this thing. And, um, you know, a year ago, we knew so, so very little about the virus, let alone if someone would have predicted that we would be dealing with this at the level that we are today, I, I don't think a lot of people really understood that, you know. Um, but I think it's it's been a challenge for everyone to just kind of take everything one day at a time and try to stay positive and try to stay disciplined about, you know, um, mitigating risk. Um, and, um, we're just happy that we're playing again, to be honest with you. Um, I think that was seriously in doubt, um, maybe even until January. I, I think there's just that, that question mark about whether or not we were going to be able to, to play at all. So, uh, you know, I think the biggest difference between today and a year ago today is a year ago today, everybody was just really super disappointed about the season being shut down and now we're feeling pretty good about the likelihood that we're, we're going to be able to get through this. Um, and hopefully we've learned enough to continue to make good decisions to allow that to happen. Um, but we'll see. I mean, that, that is the one thing that we've all learned through this is um, you don't know what this is going to look like a week from now. Between, between your coaches and the players, do you see a sense of gratitude with the notion that they are able to get out there and compete right now with the knowledge that a year ago, it was kind of taken away from them. Has there been a renewed sense of, you know, we actually get a chance to go out and play the game. We, we love to play right now when that opportunity was taken away from us a year ago. Well, I don't think there's any question about that. Um, you know, I, I, I think all of us um, have not taken this opportunity for granted because um, we lived through um, or some of the other sports uh, did not have to live through that. Um, that was an awful experience. Um, certainly, you know, much more mild compared to a lot of the things that some families have had to deal with with respect to COVID. And we certainly understand that. But if we're just talking about baseball, um, yeah, I think every day that we're out there, um, you know, we feel good about it. And um, I, I think we're, we feel blessed. Turning our attention to this year, the Flames have had a chance to get out, play two non-conference series, one at Florida International and one at number two Vanderbilt. You and I had a chance to talk that Florida International series outside of one inning, you really felt like you guys played with them and arguably outplayed them and then had a chance to take on the second ring Commodores last weekend down in Nashville. What have you seen out of the team so far, these first two uh, non-conference series as you get set for Horizon League play? Um, well, I think I think the first thing is uh, I thought we played, as you said, with the ex exception of the first inning of the first game, I thought we played very well that, that entire series and could have very easily um, won two out of three there, which was pretty impressive to me considering this was a unique winner for us in that we were not able to get on our field before we played. Um, not that, you know, we're able to get out there typically a lot, but we certainly have been able to get out there some. So to literally go from indoors to outdoors and be able to compete against, you know, a very good program um, from a very good league, I, I was pleased with that. Um, Vanderbilt was obviously extraordinarily good. Um, and the first day we were down there, we collapsed. We, we just did not handle the environment, um, the pressure, their talent um, well at all. Um, and I thought Saturday and Sunday, um, we competed exceptionally well. 
um, they could easily win the national championship. And um, we played very competitively. And I, I think we um, gained some confidence from that uh, in many areas. Um, so I think that weekend, even though you lost three times, um, was a positive thing for us. Um, and obviously now we're just, we're looking forward to conference play and, and this is going to be a much different experience uh, because of the number of games that we're playing in conference and, and all that sort of um, stuff. So um, we're just excited to be home um, and have some decent weather and get a chance to play, um, you know, at our place. You alluded to it a little bit, but new this year for the Horizon League, instead of a typical three-game series, you're now playing a four-game series. How much does that factor into you and your staff's um, decision-making when it comes to bullpen usage or pinch hitters, just trying to make sure that you have the arms and the bodies to, to be able to withstand a four-game series, knowing that you have that extra game to plan for compared to what you normally do? Well, first of all, I think we're, we're all happy that we're playing the four game series because it maximizes the number of games that we can play. Uh, I think it stresses your pitching staff um, significantly more than anything else. Um, and the third and fourth game of that series is going to be crucially important to every team in the league in terms of where they end up finishing. And it obviously plays to the benefit of a program that has depth. Uh, not only in the bullpen, but also has the ability with their starters to go up and chew up innings um, and minimize how often um, you have to go to the bullpen. So, um, you know, I feel really good about the four guys we have starting this weekend. Um, and if we get quality starts out of those four guys, um, we're obviously going to be in all those games. And then it's going to boil down to, you know, how well do we defend and, you um, you know, what we do offensively, um, but it's going to be a long weekend. I mean, that's a lot of innings to play and um, it's difficult to concentrate um, that long. Um, it's easy to get sidetracked by fatigue, uh, weather, um, failure. And so one of the things that we've talked at length about is um, in large part, how quickly we are able to refocus um, and relax um, will directly influence um, the likelihood that we're going to perform well. Last year, you had an extremely veteran-laden team up and down the lineup and in the, in the bullpen. And unintended consequence of COVID is that a lot of those guys are now back again for an extra year. So you have an even more veteran-laden team this year compared to a year ago. And as you mentioned that, you know, you talked to the team about needing to refocus and, and keep your attention diligent on the game at hand and and you know don't get distracted by the weather or the fatigue how much how important is it having a team as veteran laden and as senior laden as your squad is to be able to kind of turn those things around quickly and keep your focus at ten, uh you know pointed forward on the game at hand well i think it's impossible to um overvalue um, how fortunate we are in terms of the experience that we have on the field. It's certainly the first time in my time here, 23 years, that we had the ability to put nine seniors on a field. Um, we haven't done that yet, but we have the ability to do that. Um, but it, the, pro the problem with that line of thinking is virtually everybody that you're playing also is more experienced than they were. So yeah. it, it sort of offsets this thing. Which if you're only looking in narrow focus of your team, I think you overestimate um, how old your club is. And then you, you play somebody else. And unless they, you know, lost somebody in the first five rounds, um, they have a lot of people back too. So um, it's certainly going to be the most experienced conference Um I've ever seen the league have, um, and there'll be a lot less reliance on freshmen, um, even though we've got some very talented freshmen that I'm very excited about in their future, and I'm not nervous about playing them. Um, but typically, you know, you have two to three, maybe four guys that are freshmen, sophomore, um, and that's a difficult transition for the freshmen in particular. 
Um, but we feel really good about the people that we have out there right now. You kind of walked right into my next question, talking about some of those freshmen. Cole Kahn is one name that has gotten the start a fair amount, whether it's behind the plate or a designated hitter. Um, Ryan Nagelbox, another name that's been factoring in for you. Just talk a little bit about the, the freshmen that have made an impact for you so far and the freshmen that you think can continue to make an impact for you as the season goes on. Well, I, I honestly think the most significant impact, the, the freshmen, and I'll even throw the new players in because we have some junior college guys. Um, the most amazing thing to witness really from day one was how unintimidated um, on a day-to-day -day basis those guys were by number one, the environment, and then number two, by failure. I, I don't think I've ever encountered a group that handled it as well um certainly in the fall and the winter um some of them got challenged in the first two weekends and um but i don't see that glassy eyed what's going on uh, look across the board um i think they were very competitive and i think having that many new players um that were able to go out there and compete on a daily basis made the environment more competitive even for the guys that had been here <laughs> we've got some guys that have been here six years um made that environment even more competitive which obviously you know is a really positive thing for um our program so i'm i don't know that i've ever been more excited um in terms of the future of these young players than i am right now uh, in all our time here um they are going to be terrific um but it's still going to be a process for them um but I think it's going to be less dramatic than it's been in some past years, just because these guys um, have been remarkably resilient, um, and that 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 has been a a constant with them really from day one. So we're excited about that. Turning our attention to this weekend, opening up Horizon to play with Milwaukee. Uh, you mentioned it, that the conference is going to be as strong as you've arguably seen it in your time here at UIC, whether it's Wright State, Youngstown State, up and down the, the, the standings there, anyone can beat anyone on any given day. What's just kind of your overall outlook on the season and, and what's gonna be important for you as a team and as a program to be able to um, you know, put yourself in the best position toward, at the end of the season to make a run for a conference championship? You know, I, I think one of the things historically that we've done a very good job of is paying attention to the here and now. Um, having your total focus on, you know, this weekend, the games tomorrow, then the games on Saturday and not getting too far ahead of yourself. Um, you know, we're also playing an unbalanced schedule. So, you know, that's going to be interesting to see how that impacts the standings. Um, but I just always hope, and we talk about this, of uh, going into the last couple weekends of the year and having an opportunity to win the regular season title and um, host a tournament. And I think the team, the teams, and specifically the team that does the best job of that and not looking um, too far ahead um, is probably going to give themselves the best chance to, um, to win the thing. Um, but because there's always going to be things that you don't anticipate, whether in this year it's the COVID uh, losses um, or it's injuries, um, you know, all those things play a factor in it. And, um, you know, so right now, you know, I just I hope that our guys are just focused on this weekend and um, this is our next opportunity to go out and play well. And, um, you know, again, I think if we do that, um, you know, that's all we can ask of our guys. And then the second thing is we talk about constantly looking back and being able to say, hey, have we improved in the last two weeks? You know, are we better today than we were two weeks ago? And if you can say that and you can consistently say that throughout the season, then you know by the end of the year, you're, you're going to be a pretty good team. Mm -hmm. So um, this weekend is no more or less important than the fifth weekend um it's exciting because it's you know the first weekend but it's significance wise it's uh it's the same as 
any weekend that we're playing. And uh, I just hope we play this thing um, one pitch at a time. Well, Coach, best of luck this weekend in the entire Horizon League season. We'll certainly be watching along. And a four-game series kicks off tomorrow with a doubleheader against Milwaukee at Curtis Granderson Stadium. Coach D, thanks, and good luck this year. Thank you.